Now, if you're trying to create black and white images in Photoshop, you might be thinking that you can just go to the adjustments panel and then go and use the black and white adjustment layer, for example. This obviously turns our photo into a black and white image, and we can adjust the different luminance values of individual color channels to add or remove contrast. But the problem with this is that you just get a very basic and kind of uninteresting black and white effect. So I wanna show you a much better way to add dramatic black and white edits into your images with a different method in Photoshop. Deleting this black and white adjustment layer, we're going to instead create a gradient map layer. Going to our adjustments panel, we'll go and find the gradient map adjustment layer. With our gradient map created, inside of the properties panel, we'll click on the gradient preview, open up the basics folder, and make sure to select the black to white gradient like so. We'll then go and click OK. Now at this point, we currently have way too intense of an effect, but we can easily refine this using the method here. This gradient method simply changes how your gradient blends into your photo, and I'll leave a link below from Adobe explaining the differences between these different types if you're interested. But at the most basic level, all you need to remember is that perceptual will have the most intense contrast, linear will be a lot softer in contrast and therefore brighten up the black and white effect, and then the classic mode is going to be something in between. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, it's just right. So in this particular image, I'm gonna leave this set to linear, for example. Now at this point, I'm feeling that this black and white image is just a little bit too flat. I need to liven up the contrast, but rather than adding a curves adjustment layer or something like that, we can still use the gradient map to refine this effect. Clicking on the gradient preview to open up the gradient editor, we can adjust these color stops to change the intensity of our shadows or our highlights. The easiest way to think of this gradient preview is that our darkest darks are this color here and our brightest brights are this color here. But by clicking on one of these color stops and moving them over, it's going to tell Photoshop that we want a larger area or a larger exposure range of our photo to be totally black. And in this case, it's going to increase the contrast of those darker tones. The opposite is true with the highlights. We can click and drag this inwards to adjust the intensity of the highlights as we move this further over. You can refine these as needed until you're happy with the result and every Every photo is going to be a little bit different, but this makes it super easy to refine the contrast in your image. Once you're happy with these general stop points, we can go and adjust this midpoint here to refine whether our darks or whether the highlights dominate more of our photo. This is a great way to further refine your effect without having to use any other adjustment layers or dodging and burning, for example. In this particular case, I'm happy with a little bit more shadows in my image and we'll call that good enough for now. I'll click OK. So now with this basic idea understood, we have a little bit more of a rich and interesting black and white photo, but we can take this one step further in the next example. But before we get there, if you have a hard time remembering anything about the gradient tool or any of the steps we've discussed so far, I've left the cheat sheet below this video explaining all the steps that we covered in this video so you have an easy reference guide to refer back to later on if needed. Again, that's below this video if you want to get access to that. Going into example two here, I've already gone ahead and created a gradient map. In this particular image, since it's a lot more of a high contrast photo to begin with, there's a really bright sky compared to our subject. That means that I'm using a different method for this particular gradient. In this case, I'm using the perceptual gradient because it has a lot more intense contrast versus the linear just doesn't look right and the classic is just way too flat for me. So with the perceptual gradient mode enabled, Clicking on the gradient editor, I've also gone ahead and increased the intensity of the shadows and the highlights by bringing them both inwards so that a larger area is affected by the darkest darks and the lightest lights from our black to white gradient. But to take this one step further, we can create a dodge and burn layer to refine the intensity of this effect. To create this layer, we'll press Command or Control, Shift and N to open up the new layer dialog box. We'll set the mode down here to overlay and we'll press the check mark for the 50% gray option. I'll rename this to DB for dodge and burn and click OK. With this new gray layer above my image layer, I'll begin by selecting my dodge tool, which is going to brighten my image. 
With the range set to highlights because I want to affect the brightest areas of my photo and the exposure to a relatively high amount, such as 50%, I'm also using a soft round brush in this example. With those settings good to go, we can now click and drag anywhere over our image to add some extra highlights to different parts of our photo. This can be nice to add a little bit of extra interest around our image. And if anything feels too intense, you can go to the exposure slider and bring this down in the options bar. From there, we can go and continue to refine this effect, adding a bit of lightness to our subject's eyes around her eyebrows and her face, for example, just to add a little bit more interest and depth in our photo. Once you're happy with your highlight adjustments, we'll change the tool to the burn tool by clicking and holding and selecting the burn tool. This time we'll set the range to shadows instead of highlights with the exposure set to 50% and the same brush settings as before. I can just go and paint over the areas I wish to add a little bit more contrast or darkening to, to just add some more drama into this photo, depending on your preferences. There's no right or wrong with this. You can just experiment with the burn and the dodge tools until you're happy with the result. But it's a really nice way to touch up some of the facial features of our subject and really make her pop in our photo. So now with that looking good to go, turning off that dodge and burn layer, you can see how it really adds another layer of depth into the photo and further enhances the drama in our black and white images. This is a totally optional step outside of the gradient map, but I think it's a really helpful one that can further enhance your black and white images depending on what you like. Now I know we covered a lot in this video, so if you haven't already, make sure to download the free PDF cheat sheet that I created below this video covering all the steps that you learned here. That way you have a handy reference guide if you ever need it in the future. Now that you understand one basic use of gradient maps in Photoshop, you can use this tool for so many other color grading effects in your edits. To learn more about how the gradient map tool works, just click this video right here next to see my in-depth guide about gradient maps in Photoshop. I hope to see you there next, so just click the video right here to watch.